We have the following theorem, which we call the LFSR theorem. So a linear feedback shift register, or an LFSR, with the connection polynomial that we denote C of D, and which has the degree L, this can generate the sequence S, if and only if the D transform of the sequence S can be written as the polynomial P of D divided by the connection polynomial C of D. And where the degree of the P polynomial is less than the degree of the connection polynomial. This means that we can use Euclid's algorithm to find the shortest LFSR that can generate a specific sequence. So to find the shortest LFSR that generates a sequence S, what we do is that we delete all the common factors in the numerator and in the denominator of the D transform of the sequence S of D. So therefore, we need to find the greatest common divisor for two polynomials. And this is something we can do with Euclid's algorithm. So let us see an example where we do this for the following sequence. So we have the periodic sequence which repeats the sequence 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. This sequence we already know that we can write the D transform of this sequence as first the D transform of the sequence that we have here which is 1 plus d plus d cube plus d to the 6 and then divided by 1 plus d to the power of the period of this sequence and the period of this sequence is 7. So what we want to do now is to find the greatest common divisor of these two polynomials. So before we saw how we could find the greatest common divisor of integers and now we want to do the same thing but we want to do it for polynomials instead. And recall that when we did this for integers we wanted to find the GCD of the integer n1 and the integer n2 and in this case n1 was larger than n2 so what we did here in the first step is that we divided n1 by n2 so we could write n1 equals q0 times n2 plus some remainder r0. And then we divided n2 by r0 so we could write n2 equals q1 times r0 plus another remainder r1. And then again we divided r0 by r1 and then we continued in this way until we got in the end r i minus 2 that could be written as qi times r i minus 1 plus a remainder r i. And then we divided r i minus 1 divided by r i so we could write r i minus 1 as qi plus 1 times r i and then we had in the end the remainder 0 and when we got the remainder 0 we knew that the previous non-zero remainder was our greatest common divisor between n1 and n2 and now we want to do exactly the same thing but for polynomials so what we want to do in the first step is to write the polynomial d to the 7 plus 1 and we want to be able to write this as some quotient here times our other polynomial which is d to the 6 plus d cube plus d plus 1 and then plus some remainder here. So let us do this division so we have d6 plus d cube plus d plus 1. In the denominator and in the numerator we have d to the 7 plus 1. And d6 into d7 you can do d times. So if we multiply d into this we have d to 7 plus d to 4 plus d squared 
plus d. Then we add these two together, we will have d to 4 plus d squared plus d plus 1. And since the remainder now has a smaller degree than the denominator, it means that we are done with this division step, so we can write this as d to 7 plus 1 equals d times d to 6 plus d cubed plus d plus 1 plus the remainder, which is d to 4 plus d squared plus d plus 1. And in the next step of Euclid's algorithm, what we want to do now is to write d to 6 plus d cubed plus d plus 1 which should be equal to some quotient here times our previous remainder d to 4 d squared plus d plus 1 and then plus some remainder here. So let us do this. So in the denominator we have d to 4 plus d squared plus d plus 1 and then in the numerator we have d to 6 plus d cubed plus d plus 1. So d to 4 into d to 6 we can do d squared times and if we multiply d squared into the denominator we get d to 6 plus d to 4 plus d cubed plus d squared. And if we sum these two, we will get d to 4 plus d squared plus d plus 1. And d to 4 into d to 4, we can do 1 times, we can add a 1 here. And if we multiply 1 by the denominator, we will get d to 4 plus d squared plus d plus 1. And here we'll get the remainder 0. So the quotient here will be d squared plus 1. And the remainder will be 0. And since we have a 0 remainder here, it means that the previous remainder that we have, that is this one, this will be the GCD of our two polynomials. What we have performed now is the first step of our procedure, which was to find the greatest common divisor between the numerator and the denominator. And what we want to do now is to write both the numerator and the denominator in a shorter form, and that is a form with lower degree. And we can do that by dividing with our greatest common divisor. So our new p of d, that can be written as d to the 6 plus d cubed plus d plus 1 divided by the greatest common divisor, which is d to the 4 plus d squared plus d plus 1. And if you recall, we performed exactly this division in our Euclidean algorithm step. So the result of this, we already know, is d squared plus 1. We can note that it is not in general true that we have already performed this division somewhere in the Euclidean algorithm. This is just the case now because the Euclidean algorithm stopped after only two iterations. And because of that, we have already performed this division. But in general, you need to explicitly perform this division with the greatest common divisor. And our connection polynomial C of D, we can write as our original connection polynomial for our shift register divided by the greatest common divisor that we had for the two polynomials, like this. And this division we have not performed before, so let us do it. So we have d to 4 plus d squared plus d plus 1. 
in the denominator and in the numerator we have d to 7 plus 1. So d4 into d7 we can do d cubed times and multiplying d cubed by the denominator we get d7 plus d to 5 plus d to 4 plus d cube. If we add these two together we get d to 5 plus d to 4 plus d cube plus 1. And then d to 4 into d to 5 we can do d times and multiplying this we get d to 5 plus d cube plus d squared plus d. And summing these two we get d to 4 plus d squared plus d plus 1. And then d to 4 into d to the 4 we can do one time and we can multiply 1 by the denominator and we get d to 4 plus d squared plus d plus 1. And the remainder here is 0. Which means that we can write our connection polynomial as d cubed plus d plus 1. And this is a significantly shorter LFSR than the one that we had from the beginning here, which is 1 plus d to the 7. So let us write our new LFSR, which is of size 3, because the degree of the connection polynomial is 3. And from the connection polynomial, we'll also know that we have a feedback from this shift register cell, which corresponds to the d cube. And then we have also a feedback from this one, which corresponds to the term d in our connection polynomial. And the term 1 will correspond to that we actually have a feedback. So this is the shortest LFSR that can produce the sequence that we have here periodically. And we can see directly here in the sequence that the first three bits must be the starting state of our LFSR when we produce this sequence. And it is also important to understand that our shift register is completely defined by this connection polynomial that we have. The starting state of the shift register, that is related to the polynomial P of D, but you cannot directly from the polynomial P of D see what the starting state is. Not for these types of LFSRs, at least. So P of D will determine our starting state and C of D, our connection polynomial, will determine how the shift register will look like, what the feedback will be.